Hello again! I'm Roxanne Webster. And I'm Keith Alba. We are with my home team and at Keller Williams Advantage. That's right. And you've tuned in for another episode of The, the Honest, Honest Hour. Hour. <laughs> That's right. If you're new here, this is our chance to give you a no spin, kind of our clear. Of course, Roxanne's got to give her spin. But when we're talking, it's going to be our honest thoughts. Uh, no spins in terms of real estate industry and things that touch that industry, right? Boy, and what a strange time it is. Um, You'd think the sky was falling yeah, by the way that local media is putting it out there, right? Yes, and there's no doubt about it that it's weird. It's a change. It, it, it's different from where it was. And we had these years of just ramping up, ramping up, ramping up and getting into this huge frenzy. And now there's just kind of this... Oh, this large exhale. In the right, and, and if you take a look at 2019, right before COVID hit, we were already, I mean, the market was ascending prior to that, and, and really, that whole ascension was recovering from the Great Recession, and we were starting to level out to where we probably should have been, you know, three, four, five percent annual appreciation, and then COVID hit, <laughs> and all the other nutty stuff that went from it, the right. kind of roller coaster we've been on economically ever since um, in the housing market. Um, yeah, so the COVID hit, the bottom fell out. I mean, things just, the world literally stopped. It stopped. For periods of time, right? It's like I had this image at the time of somebody wrapping their arm around a huge plug in the wall and pulling it out, and that's the global economy. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. And then they got plugged back in. And it slowly started rebooting and started going, and then we saw it really and It's start like they plugged it into a, an electrical box that was twice as big with all that <laughs> financial infusion. I mean, God. And then things just went crazy in the market, and it would start going crazy. So where do we stand now, right? What where is today's we reality? Uh, yeah, I'd say that right now the reality, and we've been giving a version of this, um, um, we're seeing some... What, what we expected at some point, I was expecting it in 2020, mm -hmm. um, and without the extraordinary infusions of cash into the economy, I think we would have seen it. What we're seeing is the market slowing back onto that trend line, and that feels really brutal, given that we were clocking along at 20%, in some cases 22 24% annual appreciation, and the trend line, where it should be a healthy market, is 4%. So 16%, 20% slowdown um, in the market is really just kind of pulling on the reins and pulling us back to a place where people who want to buy a house can buy a house. Right. It's, it's favoring the buyers that are out there. Those are the winners. But the reality is it's still a very strong seller's market. That's right. I mean, right. we're looking, as of the end of July, there was just over 5,000 active units that were on the market. How much right. month's inventory is that? That equals about 1.7 month supply of inventory. 1.7. 1 1.7. They say a balanced market is six months worth of supply of inventory, right? So that means if nobody put another house on the market right now, how long would it take for us to sell off the shelves? So the shelf was right, right, those 5,000 active right. units, it would take 1.7 months. 1.7 months. At today's current rate of buyers taking down properties. And we're seeing that all the way up into the um, 1 to 1. 1.5 million price point as well. And we're seeing the days on market, even in the um, highest price points, the 5 million plus price points, are still a seller's market. It's just we're seeing increased days on market. Pricing it properly is vital right, right. now. Yeah, um, it's got to be the darling, right? Because stats are showing somewhere around 13, 14 showings now it's taking to get an offer, yeah. right? Around 18 days on, on market. Um, and, and so the buyers now, it's not a... Can we deal with this house or is this house acceptable to us? It's the, okay, I want the sweetheart of the block, right? The, the nicest one, the one that's got everything moving ready. I don't have to do anything. I can just move my boxes in and, and settle. Uh, those are the ones that are, that are flying off. Uh, and the other ones are battling for second place, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking up some numbers this week and um, uh, this was very interesting. Uh, in 2012, nationally, there were almost one point, no, there were um, just shy of, of um, a million realtors in the United States. Um, today, 
1.6 million. <laughs> I'll take the under on that by the end of this time next year. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Why that is interesting to me is that fully a third, if we just look at straight across numbers, a third of the workforce in our industry has never worked in any environment where they needed to know how to price a house, where they needed to know how to um, truly prepare it for sale to make it that darling, how to negotiate with buyers who've just been waiting for 10 years to stick it to the sellers. They don't know how to do all of that, right? right? That's true. And, and, and uh, so uh, we've been saying it for a few months now, but boy, does experience matter. It's huge uh, in your representations um, to make sure you've got somebody that has seen a different market that understands the language and, and how to coax offers out of buyers versus just collecting them. Right? That's right. How do you get strategies going that are going to prompt those offers? That's about marketing. That's about good conversations. That's about reputation. Right? Am I going to get this thing to the closing table? But right now, the people who are really favored, um, particularly, I mean, we've got some other influences too, and it's, um, um, it is a strange time, but the buyers, we've got a whole sector of buyers who are just carved out of the market the past couple of years. Right. because such cash positions were required. When you had to make an offer with $100,000 above list price in cash with an appraisal guarantee and waived inspections, all that stuff, anybody who needed to put a low down payment down, first time home buyers, people utilizing FHA or VA, they were out of luck. Absolutely, or somebody that didn't have an extra stack of cash behind them to do the appraisal guarantees or you know things along those lines. So it, it's definitely a market that's moving in favor of the buyers. It's still a seller's market that's, right. um, that's out there. Um, but, you know, regardless of what your real estate needs are, we're here to help. We've got the experience. We've been doing this for eons. Since, since dirt was <laughs> young. <laughs> Look at all that gray hair. See? <laughs> I always draw, joke with Roxanne that, you know, I have an iPad, which I call a tablet. When she started in real estate, she Shut just chipped the contract <laughs> into an old school tablet, right? So we definitely have I, experience. I, I resent that. I use smoke signals. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, we've got the experience. We'd love to put it to work for you. Reach out. Happy to do a free consultation, whether you're on the buy side or the sell side. We can sit down and talk to you about what it's going to take to get you your real estate dreams met in this market. And run right on over there, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And also, you know, the YouTube algorithms really love it when you like our content. Oh, yeah. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. If you didn't, um, um, go talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Call Jane. <laughs> right. See you next time.